African Environmental Review is a national platform where nature and technology meet, where protecting and preserving our precious resources takes center stage, where the spotlight seeks out and shines on the environmental innovators. This editorial series, featured on public television, takes an inside look at the outdoors, explores how the decisions we make today impact each of our tomorrows. Design Analysis Associates was handpicked as a featured guest because of its commitment to the environment in which we live. The storm arrived on September 28, 1986. Over the next five days, parts of Oklahoma would receive nearly six months worth of rain. It was a test of endurance for those in charge of minimizing the impact of flooding. We received about 20 inches of rainfall over parts of northern Oklahoma and southern Kansas uh, during the late September, early October time frame, and that resulted in a very rare flood event. Some of the challenges were that we had to make accurate predictions on how high the lakes were going to get and make good decisions on when and how much water to release. And in that event, it had rained so much that there wasn't enough flood control storage to handle it all. Back then, predictions about how high area water levels would reach were made through a process still used today called stream gauging. Stream gauging is, is a measurement to determine how much flow there is in a stream and how high the water is. And those types of information come into our computer system and they're tools that we use to make good decisions on when and how much water to release. But technology has changed since the flood of 1986 and the Army Corps of Engineers and the U.S. Geological Survey now depend on smaller electronic hydrologic systems that they say are more reliable. The old equipment we would uh, have nitrogen tanks that were large, bulky, and uh, particularly they could run out of gas or, or have nitrogen leaks. The new technology uh, cuts down on uh, the nitrogen leaks, but also uh, deletes the nitrogen tank. It's a small, uh, relatively small compressor that pumps uh, ambient air out into the river, and uh, our transducers and data collection platform collects that and stores it and transmits it. The smart bubbler system, developed by William Fletcher, is being used by the U.S. Geological Survey Water Resources Division at thousands of its gauging stations around the country. What we have here is, you know, a gas bubbling system that's microprocessor controlled that regulates the bubble flow. This unit up here actually measures the pressure. Physics has it that the pressure it takes to discharge the bubbles from that point into that water uh, is directly related to the elevation of that water above that bubble discharge. That gives the management of those gauging sites the accurate elevation, then they can calculate flow. The data that we produce for, at these stream gauges is so well used, it, it, not just by the scientific community, but also by the recreationists. And we get calls right here at Arkansas River at Tulsa for a local canoeing team and a uh, rowing team so that, that when the elevation of the water surface is up they have depth sufficient to practice their uh, exercises. Typically can measure into like a thousandth of a foot of water surface change in elevation on the O. The O was not nearly so good. We have noticed a, a very much of an improvement in the accuracy of the stream gauging equipment. The numbers that we get into our computer system today are, seem to be very accurate and help us to do a very accurate job of forecasting how high the lakes are going to get and not only are they accurate, but they're much more reliable than they were in the past. Now when Mother Nature unleashes her fury and things seem to be at their very worst, communities have the capacity to be at their very best using the latest electronic equipment to help avoid disasters. I think that we get good feedback from our customers. Primarily, a lot of them are with the USGS, the Corps of Engineers, the states, the counties, and other different agencies that measure water. Uh, the feedback that we get is a lot of times that we're there to support and service them, and when they call from the field, that we're able to take care of their needs. Our emphasis is really to continue to maintain our, our edge in accuracy and uh, ease of use. Our sensors are, are recognized by our customers as the best 
uh, as far as being rugged, reliable, and our plans are to take them worldwide. The development of this system was spawned by a need for more accurate measurements, more reliable measurements. The mechanical nitrogen systems were proven to be uh, unreliable in some cases, especially when there was temperature changes. So we took the basic physics concept and made it uh, computer controlled. It's all electronic with the exception of you know the small air compressor you see inside here. The system is a proven reliability. It has laboratory qualities that can be taken into the field and subjected to horrible environmental conditions. The old nitrogen systems had been around since the 30s. They had some uh, disadvantages, you know, the heavy tank, and plus they had mercury in them. This has replaced this. Our first systems went in in 1995, the middle of 1995. We have near 3,000 of them operating in the field now. John F. Kennedy once said, the supreme reality of our time is the vulnerability of our planet. It is a timeless statement. World population, consumption, and technology push forward often more quickly than natural resources can support, or, with consequences, more costly than we can afford. The need for a unified effort to nurture, renew, and protect the planet has never been more compelling. Therefore, once again, American Environmental Review extends a special thanks to the companies and organizations that have risen to meet today's environmental challenges. This has been a presentation of WJMK.